weekly feed. I'm Kyle Meredith. Jenny Lewis. Hello, back, Kyle. Resurrected. You didn't go anywhere, but that's what the story is right now. I went somewhere deep and dark in my yeah. mid 30s, as we were just discussing we, what happens. What to happens Juan in your 30s? You in, go crazy in your 30s. You go a little cuckoo bananas. Right. Uh, but then hopefully you kind of find some steady ground. You had some outside things happening to make you go crazy, though. I mean, I you wouldn't have gone like naturally crazy in the middle of all this, do you think? Well, I would hope not. Yeah. Um, because that would indicate some sort of underlying <laughs> a little imbalance. Uh, yeah. But um, certainly a couple of things happened in my real life. Yeah. Right. right. As that so happens mm -hmm. in real life. And it gave you the sads. And it gave me the sads. You had the sads, but uh, it uh, the sads led to a really, really great record Thanks, Kyle. Uh, called Voyage. Thank you. Although I think it could have been called Voyeurism. <laughs> really, because when you start to look at it, and, and this goes for most artists with most albums, I mean, you're laying yourself bare out there, and we're all, as fans, as listeners, picking it apart. And once you get deep in the lyrics, you know, and it is, it's, it's like it's like us being voyeurs to your career. And at some point, that's gotta be weird. I mean, you're the one signing off on it. You're the one putting it out there. But at the same time, to have all that reading in, you know, we're not just humming the melody. We're looking for the dirt, you know? Everybody becomes their own personal TMZ inside their head. Well, you know, I wish my life was that interesting. <laughs> and I wrote directly from my own experience. But, yeah. I mean, there's always some artistic license and embellishment. As with any great storyteller, sure. you must yeah. embellish to make it interesting. Yeah. My dad was actually a great storyteller, and he told a story once of sitting on Marilyn Monroe's lap and getting a boner. <laughs> it turns when out he was, he was sitting kid. on the doorman's lap, and it was yeah, that was the so embellishment, right? Who knows who it was, <laughs> whose lap? But does it really matter now? No. It's a great story. Thank That's you. That's a great story. I've never told that story before. Well, there's our exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, the Jimmy Lewis exclusive. I, I got to point out because where we are, we're at the uh, Forecastle Festival here in the in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was noticing something out there that I think you're to blame for. It's these uh, the way girls wear their shorts right now. It's a bit high waist, and I thought. Jenny Lewis was doing that like a handful of years ago, and now they're all doing it. Oh six, I was rocking. That was it. it. That yeah. was it. Yeah, I remember. I was that. rocking it, um, but now it's more out of necessity. I don't know if you're familiar with the muffin top. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. So you know the high-waisted pant seals <laughs> like the top of the muffin. Do you do you know what the word muffin top really works well in? Uh, no. The ESPN jingle. Muffin top, muffin top. Oh, I don't watch ESPN. Well, neither do I, but I think the, the, <laughs> that theme song is everywhere. That actually, uh, a relationship I was in for years ended because of... Because of ESPN? The nightly ritual of watching ESPN. Ooh. And I just, there's just something Can't about the color of the graphics. Yeah, yeah. Well, now if you <laughs> want to get on... No, if you want to get on uh, a sports person's nerves, just do the ESPN jingle with the song Muffin Top instead. Right. It'll probably drive them crazy. Will do. <laughs> Getting back, uh, so so uh, before Voyager comes out, um, there's Archives, and so Archives is the uh, the Rilo Kylie kind of compilation that happens in the middle, and that was actually the first time that all of us found out, I think for certain, that that wasn't even a band anymore, which was kind of an interesting way for that all to happen. With what you were going through in your personal life, with the uh, now storied insomnia and everything that comes along with the nice press release of the of the new record. Uh, how much were you a part of that? Was it difficult? Was it therapeutic? Was it fine? Was it closure? You know, did that help any of getting to this point? Did that have anything to do with your life? <laughs> well, of course it did. And I, I mean, I, nothing associated with Rilo Kylie would come out without my 100% involvement. Yeah. So we had been working on that for years. And it took us all years to kind of get it together to do the homework involved in putting out a release. Right. So we sifted through hundreds of photographs, and I have uh, 40 or 50 shoe boxes filled with old lyrics from over the years. Right, and right. I went through all the old lyrics, and it was really... Finding those old diaries going, oof. <laughs> Some of them not so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was amazing for us to be able to spend time together. Yeah. And so it wasn't like a sore thing that you just had to do. It wasn't like that. No, no. Yeah. We wanted to do it because we had all of these unreleased songs. And we still have tons of material yeah. 
that could end up somewhere at some point. Archives 2. Archives the sequel. 2. Yeah. And that was my play on words, Archives. Yeah. That's nicely done. That was funny. Nice Although Ar I like the pirate version of it. Archives. Oh, yeah, you know? of course. That's <laughs> goofy DJ oh, stuff God. that we like to do on the radio to uh, entertain That's ourselves. That's going to transcribe very well. It's going to transcribe me. fantastically. <laughs> Uh, the other thing, I guess it's kind of came out surprising with uh, this new solo record, is suddenly the attention uh, to sexuality. And I'm, I'm talking about the entire thing that goes along with it, not just bumping and grinding. I don't think there's really any of that happening. But, uh, but suddenly it is. One little line in a song, and just one of the guys sparks an entire discussion that probably goes well beyond what the rest of the album has even to do about. And here I am perpetuating it, yes, but you know that. But but I keep seeing that more and more. And I guess that's really. Did you could you have anticipated that suddenly you're going to be talking about everything from from modern day feminism to sexuality to you know everything that goes along with it, birth, uh, all of that. No, I, I didn't. And I wrote that song years ago. That was the first yeah. of all of these tunes. Yeah. And sometimes you just write something, right? And it just comes from you, and you, you don't really realize. The resonance of it but while I was in the studio recording with Ryan Adams we did a version of that song that I didn't end up using on the record but he stopped the song in the middle during the bridge which yeah. is that line mm -hmm. and he said this is what the song is about and it hadn't really occurred to me until right, he pointed right. it out um, but yeah no I think talking about feminism can be a slippery slope sure um, especially by the way coming from a guy right you know in an interview I mean you say the wrong thing, and it is so easily offense that sometimes isn't even meant. Well, I don't think it's important how you talk about feminism. Yeah. I think it's important to embrace it, and I'm clearly a feminist. Sure, sure. I, I make an effort in my life to give women equal opportunities in my band. Yeah. Um, and so that's all I can do is right. just sort of be a feminist by example. Well, I think any good person, guy or girl, would be... I'm going to do the scare quotes, a feminist, you know, or something like that. I mean, it's just a humanist, right? I mean, that's, that's what we're really talking about here. But like, I think that can cool. be the slippery slope if a woman says she's a humanist, which is perfectly fine to say. Yeah. See, I here I am again can, walking that. No, it yeah. can be considered inflammatory. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because when I go back and I see, um, you know, there seems to be every now and then uh, something about, okay, oh, you're a woman in the music industry, and what kind of pressures do that have? But I, you know, and maybe it's because I live in a in a world daily of NPR. I come from an NPR world, where I, you know, I, I, I see it like is that is that really an issue? You know, we hold Saint Vincent in the exact same way that we would hold Beck, you know, or something like that. You know, there, there's not a lot of difference. But when you're out there doing it, and if it is coming up all this time, is that something that's even really an issue in your day to day life professionally? That you're like, I have these hurdles because. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I've experienced that for many years, but I feel fortunate in that I think I've helped to like knock down some of those yeah. barriers and I'm out there as a female songwriter mm -hmm. connecting with both men and women yeah. and hopefully telling stories that appeal to both men right. and women. Because even the baby line, I mean, that seems to be such a, uh, a female thing, you know, like, oh, the pressures of having a child. I had the pressures of having a child. As soon as I got, you know, found a girl in my 20s where all my parents were going, so when's the baby coming, you know? So it does go relatable both ways. Sure. Anyway, you know, I can feel it. And I guess that's why I, I, that I was curious. It's like, is that, is that really a thing that you would have to face? Not uh, obviously accusing, but just completely curious. You'd be surprised, though, the, the cult of people who have children. Yeah. They want you in their cult. Mm -hmm. Like, so when are you guys uh, going to, well, I don't know. I may yeah. have a kid, I may yeah. not. You know, and that's my choice, and yeah. it's okay either way. Yeah, it is 2014. There's always puppies. It's the 90s, guys. You know, it's the, right. <laughs> it's the 90s. All over again. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things that uh, you did bring up, though, in, in the stuff that I loved is during the insomnia period that you were watching so much Cosmos. I was. Cosmos is back on. A new version. A though. new version of. Have you have you checked it out? I haven't I've seen the new version, it. but I love the old yeah. show that they started streaming yeah. on Netflix. And I, I moved into a house about five years ago, and the couple that lived there, they they passed away in their nineties, mm -hmm. and all of their books were still in the bookshelves, the entire library. Yeah. And one day I was learning about this family, going through the books, and I saw a copy of the Cosmos. Yeah. So I took it out of the bookshelf and opened it up. And it was um, autographed by Carl Sagan. 
and dedicated oh, wow. to the woman who built yeah. the house that I moved into. So I, I feel connected. You are connected to the cosmos through the cosmos. Through the yeah. cosmos. Right, right. I mean, there's the line in your song: uh, "If you want to get to heaven, what is it? Got to get out of the world. This world, however. Yeah, this yeah. world. Yeah." It seems like it just lines up perfectly, that all the interweaving of the universe. But it is nice, though, how the cosmos is suddenly on Fox. I love that. That seems like such good justice. I wonder yeah. if some of the science, though, of the original show is kind of outdated. Of the original show? Because we've show? learned so much about the right. universe since 1982. Right. <laughs> I, or I, was that book written in the 70s, I, couldn't tell, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's a question for Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and he will tell you excitedly. Or Bill Nye. Or Bill Nye, who is the great debater, debater these days. Bill Nye, the great debater. It's been fun. I like science. Me too. I like that's where we're going to wrap this thing up, too, Jenny. We that's, like science. We like science. And that'll transcribe very well. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so Thanks. much. Good luck on your year. Thank great you. Great album. All right. Mm -hmm.